Welcome back to Camp Out West. If you're new here, we're John and Emily, and when we decided to sell our home and everything we owned to buy this abandoned caravan park, we knew it wasn't going to be easy. But one of the hardest things we never anticipated being a problem has been the weather. A special thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Just showing you how wet the land is. Look at this, just ridiculous. Look at that. You can't even see it. Absolutely chucking it down. Living in Wales, we are pretty used to the rain. But since we moved onto the land, the weather has been relentless. We are only 57 days into 2024, and so far this year, we've had 50 days of rain, leaving us with only seven dry days so far this year. Fitting this project in alongside our full-time jobs, we've just had to make do with whatever the weather is doing on the days we have off. So we've just got used to working in the rain. Even though sometimes we find it hard to stay motivated due to the bad weather, the one good thing about the constant rain is we get our favorite dog walking spots to ourselves. Here's hoping the rest of the year will bring us some drier days. Welcome back. If you'd watched the last episode, you would have seen us putting the four walls up on this cabin. And the one thing we did not anticipate is once we put those four walls up, we essentially created a dam uh, that's holding water onto the floor. So we spent a bit of extra money when we we got the flooring and we bought a product called Ega Protect, and that's essentially a, a waterproof chipboard and it's waterproof up to a certain extent. Uh, the problem we're having now since putting those walls up is we're holding all that water inside the bottoms of the walls. So what we've been having to do on our very rare dry days is we're getting in there with a wet and dry hoover and you know, hoovering off all this moisture. That's after about two minutes of uh, vacuuming. Nice dirty water. So as well as hoovering out that water when the rain does stop, um, we thought the, the fastest way to get the water out is to cut, actually cut a notch into one of the sole plates. So what we did is we braced these two studs and then we've cut an inch out of it. And as you can see here, this is actually letting all of the water out. So this gives us somewhere to brush all that water away to. Um, and this has made a massive difference. Before we did this and before we were hoovering, we, we well, at one point we had an inch of water on this floor, which, you know, is not ideal at all. So since we've done this cut, you know, we've barely got any water in there. So that's made a huge difference. Um, and when we're ready to kind of close this up, we're just going to make that notch bigger, put a solid piece of timber in and then double it up. So that won't affect the structure at all. But um, that's been a really good thing that we've done. So we just got in the car. We have just had an exciting call from our roof truss manufacturers and they've kindly said we can go down to film with them today as our roof trusses are being made. Yeah, so the company we've gone with it's actually the same company we got the timber for the walls from. Uh, they're called Melingoid. They're still in, they're in Carmarthenshire, so fairly local to us, in a place called Newcastle Emlyn. And um, we actually know of them because Dalan, who's the guy that owns the business, it's all family run. Dalan's dad actually built my parents' first bungalow uh, in Newcastle Emlyn, I don't know, like 30, 40 years ago. So it's crazy that it's coming full circle and we're there building our, our tiny version of a bungalow, I guess. 
um, yeah, using the same company that my parents did. So really excited for today and to see actually, you know, how they get made. When we arrived, we went to the office to chat with Dylan and Ivan to check over our plans that they had designed on their 3D software and also to decide on the position of our Velux window. We took all your advice about adding in a window to our kitchen area and thought a skylight would be the perfect option to add in some extra light. So thanks for all the helpful suggestions. We also got to meet Bear, the biggest softie of an office dog you'll ever see. What a unit. Once we'd confirmed the design, they printed the spec sheet and the picking list so the team could start the making process. First it starts in the timber yard where they select the right lengths and thickness of timber for the job. We learned that truss timber is a higher spec than the other general construction timber like C16 and C24 that we've been using. Once picked, they lift the timber up onto the first floor, onto some rollers and onto where the saw is located. All the measurements and the angles are pre-programmed into the cutting machine. This is such a clever tool, it can cut the angles as well as measure the overall length of the timber, hands-free once the timber's been loaded onto it. After the timbers are cut, they lay them all out and set up the deck for a template and measure and double check everything. They then clamp the timbers in place and mark out where all the fixing plates go so that all the trusses are exactly the same and are super accurate. Once all the different pieces of the truss are in place and fixing plates placed on both sides, they use this massive press to press everything together and that is the truss complete. Then they repeat the process for the rest of the roof.
Thank you to Mel and Goyd for letting us come down to film our order being made. A special thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. If you're new to Squarespace, they are an all-in-one website platform that make it easy for anyone to be able to create professional and modern websites no matter your web design ability. If you're creative like us or an entrepreneur and you want to start your own online store or you need your own booking platform or portfolio, Squarespace is the perfect platform to showcase any project or business. We have a number of Squarespace websites which we're currently working on. From our wedding photography business, The Wild Bride, which we use as an online portfolio and booking platform. And we are also working on our Camp Out West online store. We love the amazing selection of ready-to-use website templates already available within our Squarespace account, which meet the different requirements of each of our businesses' website needs. We love how easy we can customise every design detail with their easy-to-use drag-and-drop technology, which works on both desktop or mobile allowing us to create multiple websites with ease, thanks to the next generation website design system, Fluid Engine. They have some amazing built-in features from their online store functionality, which allows us to upload our products and get them ready to sell to people from all over the world in just a few clicks, to being able to accept appointments, which comes in handy when booking in calls with our future wild bride couples. If you've ever dreamt of starting your own business or brand, or you're creative and want to elevate your online presence with a new portfolio, just head to squarespace.com forward slash campoutwest for a free trial and get 10% off your first website purchase or domain. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So we're just at the back of our raised bed garden and we've decided we're going to build a little greenhouse, aren't we? Yeah, so we've got a very big polytunnel, uh, which we, well, we got in the Black Friday sale last year, but we needed a lot of prep work to the ground at the back of the, the land, kind of land drainage and things like that before we can actually put that in place. So it's, it's, well, believe it or not, it is spring, or spring is coming, <laughs> even though we're in Silent Hill up here um, with all the mist and the fog. But um, we need to start getting some seeds planted up because that's going to become what we plant in that polytunnel and in this garden this year. Yeah, last year we completely missed the window for growing our own food. We managed to get a little bit in September, but we were so late in the season. And one of our big goals when we moved onto the land was to be able to become more self-sufficient and grow more of our food so we don't have to go to the supermarket. So by just building this, this will be our little seed greenhouse so we can just start planting everything ready for later in the year when we can plant it into our bigger greenhouse and into our raised beds. Yeah, one of the plans with this greenhouse we're going to make is we want to make it in a way that if we want to move it in time we're making it where it's almost like we're making our own flat pack greenhouse mm -hmm. so we've decided to use a corrugated plastic and then just a timber frame so we're going to make each panel like each wall is like its own thing so if we want to move it we just have to unscrew the corners and then we can just walk off for the building yeah so we're just going to start work on the base now when we made the raised bed garden we kind of made this nice little border around it with these oak sleepers uh, we've got, well, we've got four of them left, the ones that were kind of a bit bowed and kind of not really usable. So we're thinking as a solid heavy base to attach this greenhouse, because obviously we're in a quite an exposed area, we're going to use the oak that's already there, because that, well, it probably weighs... Yeah, solid. It's wet, so it probably weighs 100 kilos. We're going to add onto the sides of it and onto the back. We're essentially going to make like an oak frame, which we can fill with gravel. So then when you're in there, it's like nice and dry. And then we're gonna bolt our walls of our greenhouse or building, whatever it is, to that. So that's gonna be what's gonna hold it from flying away. Yeah, we hope, fingers crossed. Yeah. And we've bought these um, like ground screw anchors. So that's another method we're gonna use to secure this in place. First, we put a membrane down, which we'll top with our leftover gravel from our raised bed garden. This will act like a floor to our greenhouse so we aren't sinking in the mud. Next, it was time to start work on the frame of the base.
Now the base was in place, it was time to add in our gravel floor. The next morning we started work building our greenhouse walls. We've got four walls all framed up now, so the next job is to attach our corrugated plastic. So we've kind of made this greenhouse with the idea that we've basically made our own little kit greenhouse. Uh, the idea being that we can take the walls apart and move it wherever we want in the future. So we're just going to actually sheath it all in the, the plastic panels and then we'll get it all built. <laughs> he just kiss you. Kisses for dad. Next it was time to cut off the excess wall plastic. just finished putting on the plastic sheeting on the last of our walls so we've got three out behind me and then this is the front one with the door we're leaving the top bit above the door for later but um, they're ready now so we can actually carry them into place I'm gonna stand all these up and then we'll just do the last bit which will be making the roof uh, which we're hoping to be nice and quick so we should have a greenhouse by the end of the day
got the four walls up now and we've just finished putting the, the cladding onto the roof. So we're ready now to drag it up there. Um, we've kind of done this, I think we've already explained in sections so we could take it apart in the future. Um, we didn't really think of how tall this is going to be, it's quite tall. So we're going to use bits of timber as like a sled and then this strap to try and drag the roof up into place. That's what we're going to do now. My fingers crossed we don't snap it. Well done. So the greenhouse is actually finished, which is really cool. So I finished it last night, did the last bits of the, uh, the trim. So I've done trim pieces for the corners, the side of the roof and around the back as well, you can't really see, just to kind of finish it off and it strengthens the corners. Um, I did the last panel here as well. So it's all completely closed in. Really happy with how it's turned out. Uh, we actually, well, M found this door on Facebook Marketplace for a whopping five pounds. That's a, a good deal, but it's nice and solid. And uh, yeah, it's ready now for him to start growing some stuff. And we've uh, we finished it just in time because we've just had the call from Melingoy to say that our delivery is on the way. So our trusses and all the timber and all the OSB for the roof is arriving in about half an hour. So we're just gonna have a bit of a tidy up and get ready for that. <laughs> We've got all of our rafters and all the timber for the roof structure on site now, which is really exciting. Um, we're very happy that we got the professionals involved in this part of the build. You know, they've done all the structural calculations and all the mathematics that I definitely didn't want to do. And seeing that all the trusses up against each other, there's another pile over there. There's 15 of them, and if you put them all side by side, they are exactly the same, which I think if we'd have had a go doing it ourselves, they would not be the same. So hopefully that's going to translate into us making a roof that's nice and straight and flat and all that sort of stuff. But I'm um, really happy with how they've come out. Big thanks to everyone in the last video that entered the competition with passenger clothing. So we'll put the two lucky winners on screen now. But that's the end of today's video. And if you wanna join us next time and you'll see us putting this roof on this cabin. You got the zooms? You got the zooms? Okay. Right. We'll play, let's go. You got the zooms? Go play. We'll play. Go play. Go, go, go. Go play. <laughs>